Like a fine wine, the Mac Pro has aged nicely and pairs well with cheese. More on that soon. But this year's recycled aluminum tower has a pairing we hate, parts pairing. So the $7,000 question is, will it be modular inside? Thanks to integrated memory, you're pretty much stuck with your at purchase configuration, but the sheer number of ports with room for expansion is pretty dizzying. First off is the tool-free case removal. The handle action is smooth as silk, but the weight of the case always surprises me. Oh no! This thing is so much bigger than typical Apple tech that I barely clear the camera. As expected, few changes in here, and that means tons of space for upgrades. Round back, we find our two mystery doors. Behind door number one, RIP modular RAM. Just a second empty slot here. Very satisfying lever though. Door number two reveals our terabyte M2 SSD. Same form factor as yesteryear, super beefy compared to the studio's blade, with chips packed onto both sides. This new location is much more accessible than in the 2019 Pro, but that second slot is a bit of a tease. Apple has confirmed that DIY expansion won't work. Flip it back around and we can turn these bracket thumb screws with a driver for fun, then pop the little rail latch. Now we can remove the USB-C board and the HDMI slash USB-A board. The ports are all soldered, which is a shame. They've each got a metal faceplate to secure them to the frame, which should make it strong enough for modular ports. That said, this audio port is semi-modular for some reason. No graphics module this year, so we'll head straight for the power supply. Thumb screw brackets away, the unit pops right out. Sleek and monolithic as expected. Now I'm gonna scramble indiscriminately and try to find the rest of the good stuff. Nothing's budging, so I'll remove the little blower fan cowling that hid the SSD last time around. That nets me three more screws and the fan is free. Looks pretty much like the fan array from the 2019, complete with fuss-free spring contacts. The cable-free management in here continues to impress. Let's free the little speaker back here. It seemed to help last time. Oh, hey, our first cable. Well, we can safely say this year's heatsink is a different beast. That's good news because you no longer need an ultra long driver to remove it, but it definitely took me forever to get it free. Screws, screws, more screws, some brackets. You get the picture. A little waggling and the logic board is free. Just look at this monster. The M2 Ultra is huge and much more photogenic than the previous processor. And we've got a microchip PCIe switch. Literally, that's the company name, microchip. It is incredible to watch Apple's engineers improve an already streamlined device. Improved component replacement, more accessible heat management, and the same stellar lack of snarled cables is impressive. That said, I miss swappable RAM, and I for one am not ready to make a $7,000 gamble on integrated memory just yet. But a $7,000 cheese grater? People were so passionate about our cheese grating last time that I knew I had to up the stakes. This year, we've got four cheeses and I'll be rating the grate on a scale of one to five. In alphabetical order, we have Cotija. The grate on this is immediately very satisfying, hands down my favorite, but it crumbles more than it grates, so I'm gonna have to give it a three out of five. Next, Gouda. This smoked Gouda smells amazing, but grates very poorly. Look at that smear, one out of five. Now we've got mozzarella, a pizza classic. I definitely expected more. This is still too gummy. Two out of five, not great. And finally, Parmesan. The Parmesan requires a bit of skill, but once you get it going, the curl is fantastic. Five out of five, that is some great grating. Here's hoping Apple releases repair manuals soon. I may be out of wine, but I'm certainly not done whining. Cheers.